Hey neighbors, have you ever just had one of those days? Well, I have had a couple of them all in a row. Look here. Look how pretty this package is. This was shipped to me from a friend and it came all the way from Idaho. It was supposed to have arrived yesterday. We checked the tracking number because it didn't arrive and it said that it was delivered yesterday that it was left on the porch. Well, it certainly wasn't left on our porch. I called the post office and the post office gave me the runaround and so I, I thanked the nice lady and I got off the phone and I got in my car and I decided to go to the post office to try to find out what was happening. And look, this is what I found. Yep, I found that on the side of the road under a mailbox at a neighbor's house about three doors down. And, and it was, it was this box. It was this box of eggs that came all the way from Idaho. And I'm going to get an, I've got it covered up because I'm sure he doesn't want his address shown on YouTube. I'm going to open this up and let's take a look at what's inside. Now look at this. I've got Captain with me. Say hey, Captain. Hey. Hey. The, he says this is his first time to ever ship eggs, and I have taken a peek in here. I think he's done a really good job, but y'all have watched the video. I'm going to put a link up in here of where I wrapped eggs, where I sent them to a to a friend, some chicken eggs. Now look in here. These are Spangled Russian Orlov eggs. This is a variety of chicken that I have had in the past that I do no longer have. I am so very excited. It looks like they all have arrived in pretty good shape. Let's see if we can get this out. I don't see any that are leaking. Nothing is busted. Let me pause this. I'm going to open this up again. Now we're being very gentle. As gentle as Kaffin can possibly be. He has wrapped each egg in a paper towel. And then has wrapped it again in bubble wrap. And then had it packed in this hard plastic egg carton. Like Be one. very I careful. Like one. Is this, look at that. Look how beautiful that egg is. Now Orloffs are an old, old breed. We always put the pointy end down. I always put the pointy end up. Well, they, they have to go down. I'm opening we this look, one. Look, open We put them down, the pointy end down, mm -hmm. so that the air cell will settle and come to the top, the oh. big end. Okay. That that helps the egg to hatch. Okay. Hold on just a little bit. Let, let's finish talking. Orlos. I'm going to put a picture of an Orlos right now. Hold on. Now, one of my kids jokes that I'm like a time traveling that I record sometimes the beginning after I record the end. And this is one of those cases. During yesterday's power outage, I lost some of the footage where I was talking about the red jungle fowl eggs that my friend sent. The red jungle fowl are the tiny little pure wild species of pheasant that all domestic chickens have been bred from. Now watch these clips here. These red jungle fowl are just as pure as you can find. They are not from a hatchery. They are not from a commercial chicken hatchery. These are not chicken eggs. These are a pure, rare breed pheasant eggs. Yes, this is the species of rare pheasant that all domestic chickens have been developed from. But these are not what hatcheries sell. These are the amazing little birds, little, little pheasants that... I'm just so, so, so happy to get. I'm going to clean out my incubator and I'm going to get these eggs set. Now y'all just hang tight and let me do that, okay? Alright friends, let's load this up. Now look, here is the tray that goes inside the bottom part of this Brincy, how do you say it, Brincy or Brincia? I've always said Brincia. But I watched recently a video from the company, and they say Brincy. So I guess I'm going to have to change the way I say it, Brincy. But look, can you see? You can't see. This thing has grooves along this edge. 
and along the other edge also. It's supposed to have dividers that go across. What you're supposed to do is line your eggs up all the way across and then put a divider. But you know what? I don't have the dividers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load this tray up with my eggs and I'm going to pack them tight. Now what I have, I have these eggs that my friend has sent and they are the Russian Orloff eggs and the red jungle fowl eggs. And I don't have enough to fill up this whole incubator tray of just his eggs. So I'm going to use some eggs of my own, kind of as fillers, just to fill that up. Because what's going to happen is, if I do this, the way this works is that this sits on a turner and it rocks it back and forth like that. And what happens is, is that these eggs roll around if it's not full. I need to order those dividers, don't I? I'll try to do that soon. But look, these are my eggs. These are from my red naked neck chickens. And I have, I have a few of them in a basket here that I'm going to use. You remember, these cute little eggs are from the red jungle fowl. They're not chickens. These are the original wild pheasant that all of the domestic chickens have originated from. And they couldn't be any more dissimilar from these Russian Orloff eggs or these red neck and neck eggs, if you could imagine it. They're totally different. Now, my friend up in Idaho, he has written on here in pencil RJF for red jungle fowl. But what I'm going to do, because you set the eggs pointy end up, and I'm going to pack this full, and I can tell the difference. I can tell that I can tell that these little eggs are the jungle fowl, and that these bigger light colored eggs are the Orloffs, and I can tell that these are from my red neck and necks. I'm going to go ahead and mark them. I'm going to mark these with an R. I'm going to mark these with an O. I'm going to mark these with an N. And I'm going to go ahead and stack them in that tray. So I'm going to do that now. Now you'll see I got them all in here. They are not packed tight, but they are in. Now I had some help making these beautiful ends that look like S's. They're a little bit backwards. That's okay. My baby is only five years old. Do not make fun of her. She put the O's on the Orloffs, and of course I put the R's for the Red Jungle Fowl. But look right here, this one, and this one, and even this one down in the corner. I didn't have enough of the red jungle fowl, or the Orloffs, or the red neck and necks to fill this up. And so we used some leghorn eggs. Now the hen that laid these is a beautiful brown leghorn, and she lives in the same pen as the neck and neck. I only have two hens for my neck and neck rooster. And I found that he was just a little bit rough with only two hens. He's a nice rooster, don't get me wrong. But if I put a leghorn hen in with them, he now has three hens to dilute his attentions with. And I can tell who lays what egg because her eggs are always white, this light, light color. Almost the same color as those Orloff eggs. But look. This is called an octagon incubator for obvious reasons. If you do not have the automatic egg turner, you can do that with your eggs. You can rock it back and forth. And you can see that I have put some tissue paper in here just to fill in some of the gaps because I don't want them clanking around. You don't want to pack these in so tight that they're likely to burst. You do not want to do that. But look, I'm going to take these. I'm going to put these onto the turner. I'm going to put the lid on. I'm going to put some water in there first. You just pour water down in between the eggs. Just dribble it in. There's some grooves down in there that holds the water. And we're going to mark on the calendar. And three weeks from now we should have babies. Aren't they beautiful? Say a prayer for these. These came all the way from Idaho. 
And these are some of the purest red jungle fowl eggs in the whole country. And I'm so excited to have them. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Be sure to hit that little bell down there to get subscriptions. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.